Hello, I'm Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. We are starting off with the daily chart of the S&P 500. And looking at this now, I've got a lot of lines going on here some support and resistance lines, but in the end what we can see is uh, this week's action uh, came up, tested the twin moving average, and we fell right on down. And we're basically basing at last week's low. Of course, we have the wick low all the way down to 1100. Uh, but 1120 is where we're at right now. Our indicators are all uh, oversold for the most part, although stochastics have a little bit further to go. So, you know, again, is this a, a double bottom possibly, or is this going to be the push to test the two, uh, March 2009 lows? That's what we already talked about. There's not a lot of catalyst this week. We can see on the weekly what's a little bit uh, worrisome is that we broke the 200 on the weekly. Now, on the daily, I believe, let's go back real quick. Uh, you can see we're already below it, and we have, you know, we've already had the death cross, as they saw it, the 20 and the 50, all below the, the 200 moving average. Uh, on a weekly, we are also just below the 200 moving average. And you can see uh, this line, as we go over, kind of matches in with the July of 010 time frame and uh, the... Uh, basically, beginning of, of of ten. So there's, there could be some some support in here with these numbers. But the other place where I see we may find some support is here on the monthly chart. We can see first of all we can see our uptrend line from March of 2009 was violated this month. Blow it up for you. So this action took that out, and now the question is, will we once again? find support at the 200 moving average. Our monthly still have some room to go. You can see MACD in the monthly is just now heading down. RSI is heading down stochastic. So that's saying our monthly is saying there's more room to go. So that, that is certainly worrisome. Uh, going to the NASDAQ, we see the same thing. We are all moving averages are below the 200. This time we didn't quite make it up to the 20. We made it up to the 10, and we fell. Uh, what's different here is that on the S&P, um, we had we had some room to go on this wick here from last week's lows. But look at this candle. This candle is a a hammer, and again, this is just another indication it doesn't look good. Look at our stochastics actually giving the down arrow now. So. That's that's not that's not good for the bulls. As traders, we trade it no matter what way we go. Good news for the Nasdaq is here's the the weekly, and we're not below the 200 moving average. So the 200 may be uh, 2250, may be a price level to watch to the downside. And going out one more time to the monthly, also nowhere near the uh, the 200 moving average, finding support at the 50 moving average. So uh, that's good, uh, but again, the monthly just turn it rolling over, which says maybe we will come all the way down to test the 200 moving average. Let's go take a look at the leaders and see if we can get any indication, but right now, it's obvious the market looks weak. 
So as we begin to look at our uh, industry leaders, we have Apple. And Apple, I mean, the good news is we can still make a, a good argument that it's in an uptrend. Uh, you can see our 200 moving average, which is the slowest, is still angling up. Uh, you know, on the bad side, you know, uh, it's it's coming into uh, some areas of support. Certainly, 350, uh, 355 appears to be uh, definitely some wicks in here. Um, you know, so that seems to be a, a area of support. Although, you know, it's going to make sense. You know, as we said, uh, for it to come test a 200 moving average. Uh, so, if I was to talk about Apple, I would say sideways, sideways to down. Let's go to Amazon. Amazon, kind of the same thing going on here. Uh, this was a, a line we were drawing for this wedge that we broke out. But if you zoom in, you can see uh, it acted as support here, acted as support here. Amazon below the 200 moving average. Uh, definitely a downtrend. So uh, here's another one that I would have to say down. I'm not even going to say sideways. Going to Google. Look at this. This is a shame. Not only, you know, Google is not messing around at last week's lows. Google is going all the way back to where it, it shot up. Remember, this was its earnings. Uh, and it, so it's retesting 480. Uh, so that's certainly uh, certainly not good. All of the moving averages below the 200. So Google is definitely down. Definitely down a week. Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs never really participated with the market move up. Just kind of consolidated, and then when the market pulled down, it came down with it. So uh, this 110 price level seems to be something that we need to watch out for. Let's zoom back out one more second here, and I guess we're not going to see firsthand uh, where's our next support after that. Let's go. Let's try a weekly. See if we can see anything. There we go. Weekly. Hmm. Looks like we could go all the way down to 100 is our next support after 110. Uh, Netflix. Netflix, what a shame. What a shame. I mean, obviously, we can still argue that it's a beautiful uptrend. So, okay, great. But, you know, we've uh, we've closed below uh, some key levels that we have to be concerned about. You can see uh, the 50 didn't hold as it held the whole way up. The 200, we got a little bounce, but now we're through that. And again, just like uh, Google, you know, we're not bouncing at last week lows. We're, we're, we're below that. So we ha we're going to have to watch 190 here. You can see this little swing low in here as our potential move from this 205. And our last one is Priceline. Priceline, same thing. Look at this uh, M pattern. Uh, definitely some weakness. If we break here, you know, you got to come down to about 421 with these highs in here but definitely you can see this M pattern going on in here uh, definitely weekly so sideways to down so for the most part we got sideways to down or down so our leaders of the market are leading us lower okay first off we're starting with the dollar and we can see that for the most part the dollar is, is still in this large range now we can make an argument about these these lower highs so that means we're, we're trending lower but 0 .73, uh, 73.50 still seems to be the, the the line in the sand, at least initially. Um, our point of control is over at 73.98, so um, which which would make sense. Um, so until we break out of this, you know, again, if the dollar is weak, the stock market is strong. But this is the interesting thing: the stock market is weak, and the dollar is weak. The dollar is not shooting up here. Dollar pulled right on back with it. What is strong? <laughs> Gold, baby. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful inside bar. Boom. Uh, I hope you guys, some of you guys at least are watching the Forex videos that we put out and we talk about gold every day as a part of the Forex videos. But just beautiful. And as we've said, this whole move up, you tell me your risk tolerance. If your risk tolerance is buy gold high, it certainly can go higher, but you're, you're certainly at, at a higher risk buying at these high levels. Finally, we have oil. If oil is dropping, how come my, the price of the gas pump is not going down? And you can see oil is kind of fell, fell off here. We got our, our resistance now at 85 as we come back up. You also see the 500 moving average here. I wonder if, if oil is now going to uh, cycle channel between 80 
and 90. As we move to our education portion of the video, we want to talk about pulling the trigger. And we have to understand that the natural response to pain is to avoid the situation that causes it. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the hesitation and the fear of, of uh, uh, pulling the trigger and executing trades. Our cartoon says, my doctor told me to avoid unnecessary stress, so I don't, didn't open his bill. <laughs> so the point is, because we're scared of the result, we've talked about all the fears of trading. Because we're scared of the result, because we're fear, scared of what might happen, we just don't trade, you know, and you can't make money unless you're in a trade and you're scared of being a trade. But I was talking with a, a, a person today, I'm sorry, yesterday, and I was telling her, you know, the way that we're going to help you with your emotions is what I always tell you guys. Let's come up with a system. Let's first identify, does it match your account size? Does it amass your risk tolerance? Now let's back test it and let's prove it Let's, so that we can have a positive expectancy and know that this is going to work over time. Once you've documented it, that is what's supposed to allow you to feel comfortable with the trade, knowing that over time it's going to work. That doesn't mean it's easy. Uh, to this day, I still, you know, uh, I have my get up and walk away moments from the computer, you know, but that, you know, uh, every trader still deals with that. But you have to understand that we're in the business to make money. And the only way to get, make money is to be in a trade. So we can't avoid trading. We have to make sure that we're prepared to trade by having everything proven, back-tested, and uh, aligned to who we are as a trader. And then we develop the trader's mindset so that we can effectively enact the system. As you guys know, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We still have our free uh, five-part video course on high probability trading. Uh, it's five videos showing you the different components that should be in your trading setups. That should give you a, a guide into how we teach, how we coach. And so our one-to-one -one coaching sessions where we help you develop that trader's mindset, help you align uh, strategy to your capital, to your risk tolerance, develop that personalized trading plan. Uh, we also have our free trade, uh, free, <laughs> we also have our tr video trading course broken down into three um, uh, sections. The introduction to trading, everything you need to know about technical analysis, chart patterns, money management. Then we talk about specific trading plan, plan components. And then finally, we go over various trading setups and how to manage the trade. We have uh, our great broker. Uh, if you're going to trade, uh, you can get 20 free trades. And they have intraday margins as low as uh, $300. And, of course, charting package for both stocks and forex. It works on Macs and PCs. And they have a great uh, browser-based uh, setup. But as we said, it's not about the system or indicator. It's about having a trader's mindset. It's about having positive expectancy because you've taken the time to match up your system with your capital, with your risk tolerance. And we can help you do that with our coaching session. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.